In this video, I'm going to share with you how it's best to identify high risk reward opportunities. Now, it's not going to be like everybody says, you know, most people are like, oh, you know, if it swoops too slow and, you know, do this, do this. I'm going to go a little bit deeper in that in this video, but I'm going to keep it really, really simple. Now, part of that is what you see on your chart right now. Now, these vertical lines, um, I'm going to make this so, so simple so that you don't have to know anything about really about fundamentals. You can just look at it using this one measure that I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, but yeah, so let's first of all break down the two main types of systems that people use we have mean reversion and then we have a trend following now most of you are going to fall in one of these camps and that's great but we need to understand the strengths versus uh weakness weaknesses for each of these now let's let's just focus on the strengths here because the strength of one is the weakness of the other and vice versa so mean reversion works best in periods of low volatility now this is just another way of saying consolidation uh, choppiness, any of these sorts of words. Trend following, on the other hand, the strength is going to be periods of high volatility, meaning price is basically trending to some degree. Now, the weakness of mean reversion is going to be high volatility, and the weakness of trend following is going to be low volatility. And so when we look at getting a better risk reward, where we're basically hoping for more of a directional move in price, what we're really looking for is some kind of trend following. Now, trend following doesn't necessarily have to be, oh, I've established an existing trend and I ride it and I continue to ride it. That's fine. But a trend could be even if prices are going sideways, but you predict that here the volatility is about to change, whether that's up or down. And then you just adapt your risk management to capitalize on whichever that direction is. That's still, in my opinion, a form of trend vol following. You could call it volatility catching. You could call it whatever the hell you want. The name really isn't important. So the question is, is, is there a way that we can forecast or predict the volatility? Now, the answer is absolutely yes. So we've got to think about this. Why does volatility change now of course this is a very very there's lots of answers to this but just to keep things really simple uh, for a framework for us to think through volatility really changes when new information and new reactions happen so if new information comes out about the prior you know about a, a country or an economy then that's going to cause people to react to that information. And based on whether that reaction is significant enough is going to decide whether we're going to have these big fluctuations in price because everyone has their own opinions and their own reactions to certain pieces of, of news and stuff like this. Now, to make this simple, you know, what actually is this? Well, really, all we're looking at is particular news events. Now, goes a little bit deeper than just this because what most people will do is they'll go on forex factory or another economic calendar and they'll just look for the high impact news you know the red news that is not quite good enough right because it's not about the news it's about expectations and it's about surprises really guys this is the key most of the news that you will see, like if we go along here, right? If you look at the actual compared to the forecast, you'll see that most of the time, the actual is going to be very similar to the forecast. Now think about what this means, right? If the markets are about expectations of the future and surprises, then what's going to happen most of the time is because this forecast has existed long before the actual came out, the market is already factored in and expected that this forecast will happen. So if the actual comes out and it's really, really close to the forecast, then the markets aren't going to care. Even if it's high impact news, it doesn't matter because they've already factored in what they predicted because the markets are always trying. And this is the key, guys. This is the key. Markets are always trying to price in the future. They will price in the present if it's a surprise. So this is key because these two things help us to understand what's going on, right? It basically breaks down the news into two main categories. We've got surprises and we've got future anticipation. And these two types of events, if I can find the other thing that I did, are going to be different. So I've already kind of written that down twice. Let's get rid of these. Central bank 
speeches, interviews, meetings. These are typically going to be the things where when you go through it, you're not going to see a number available. Here, Fed, Chair, Powell, Speech. So we're on EURUSD, so the Fed is the Federal Reserve, the U, U, uh, the American Central Bank. Um, there's no, There are no numbers here, and there will never be numbers here, because it's a speech, right? Most people don't want to watch the speech, and that's fine, because what we're going to talk about in a minute. But the point that you need to understand is that they are talking about expectations of the future in these speeches, which is why they're so critical for currency movements. Everything else... is based on surprise. For example, whether you're looking at infl uh, infl I was gonna say inflammation, <laughs> if you're looking at inflation metrics, whether you're looking at unemployment, whatever, those things aren't gonna have very like a massive difference unless, unless there is a big, big, big unexpected um, change to what was, to, to basically what the forecast was. Unless that happens, they really aren't as high impact as everybody makes them out to be right? Because it's a little bit more nuanced than that. Now, if you wanted to take this one step further, and this is not what this video is about, if you want to see another video where we forecast the actual direction and try and predict that as well, I'm more than happy to make that. But let's just say we had no idea about the fundamentals. We just knew that there was a speech on this date and we've got this news on this date. So we don't really know anything about fundamentals. Then what can we draw from it? Well, assuming that we've picked correctly, we can assume that most of the time, um, volatility around these events will increase specifically things like central bank speeches stuff like this we can assume the volatility will increase more often than not sometimes you'll be wrong sometimes you'll be right when you're right you will make more than when you lose that's the idea that's the premise right um and so this is really really critical now let me just go through some examples here on the chart so just for context, these blue lines are the European Central Bank interest rate decisions where they decide. Now, if you see what this looks like down here, you'll see these are often um, brought out with speeches either side. So we've got a press conference, um, et cetera. So let's look at how prices move. So we're, look, we're most interested in what happens around these events, um, normally a day or two before and a day or two after, um, and how that compares to what was happening before. So we can see here, we have this period um, of low volatility. You can't really argue with this. Very low volatility, nothing crazy to report. Then before the announcement, the volatility has markedly increased. We've had this boost, right? Now, same sort of thing over here. This is a less extreme version, but we have this right here. For the period before, we increased volatility. And for a little bit of the period after, we increased volatility down there as well now remember right now we're not talking about direction i'm not talking about like predicting or oh, the news that comes out tomorrow is going to go up then it's go down going to go down then we run into a whole other issue which is the prediction problem and humans are normally really bad at predicting the future um so it's just something to keep in mind this is just for the easy 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 approach now i want you to ignore the white lines that i have marked on here for now uh, let's just keep looking for this pattern right what do we see? Low volatility. And then before the blue line here, what do we see? And after the blue line, big, big, big example of increased volatility. Over here, let's see, we have a period of low volatility. And then just before the announcement, uh, yes, it's not the clearest, but for a day or two afterwards as well, we definitely see an increase in volatility. Right? You can't really argue with that. There's an increase in volatility there. Um, over here, I know I'm missing out chunks. I'm just trying to stick to the interest rate uh, examples. We can see that leading into it, this is an interesting one because we actually maintain low volatility even throughout. But then afterwards, when this happens, which is unemployment, by the way, we had a, a surprise. So sometimes this is what's going to happen, guys. This is why it's always important to understand the difference between expectation and surprise. Because if you expect, um, if this was all as ex expected, you can see the market's reaction in price to the European Central Bank or the ECB's interest rate decision. Now, if that really didn't have much of a reaction, then sometimes just it just takes one more thing, one more catalyst that will create a big reaction in price. And in this case, it's unemployment, which is typically going to be like the second most influential thing in price most of the time. We can see volatility increased as a result of that. We then had a period of low volatility. And then leading into the next decision, we have a period of high volatility before and high volatility after. 
Now, those just show you the beginning of this understanding, right? It's a very basic way of looking at it. The question then is, how does this help us? Like if we don't understand the direction and we don't want to sit back and try and forecast like which direction it's going to go in, then is there still a way that we can benefit from it without any of that? Well, the answer is yes. Because if we know that higher volatility environments are going to happen, it means that most of the time we're going to be moving more in one direction than another. If we zoom out and we just look at these high volatility periods, this one moved basically straight up. This one moved up, but then it moved down. Okay, but both times it was fairly straight in the way that it did it. This one moved straight down pretty much. This one kind of dipped down a little bit, but then basically moved straight up for the major majority of it. This one basically went straight down. Then it went straight up. Then it went straight down, etc. So why is this important? Well, because if we're looking for those high risk reward opportunities, even if we don't understand the direction, we know that if we pick a direction and we have a higher risk reward, then because even if we were just flipping a coin at which direction it was going to go in, because we factored in the higher volatility and we've let our risk reward do a lot of the heavy lifting for us, then what it opens the door for us is to gain an edge just with this in risk management, right? Now, listen to what I said again. It opens the door for us to be able to get an edge just using this, so volatility forecasting and risk management. This is what I always mean when I say things like, um, you know, gaining an edge with risk management, focusing on the risk management, these sorts of things. Um, so I want to then draw your attention to some setups that I took um, a couple of weeks ago or something like that and why I did. What is this white line? Well, let's first of all look at during here. Why was I not really interested? Why have I got no white lines during here, even though there are news events here? Because if we just look at the actual compared to the forecast, Okay, very similar, actual and forecast, very similar. Actual and forecast, very similar. Actual and forecast, pretty similar. Very similar. Similar, 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 similar. What does that mean? It means during this period, what did we see? No significant new information now this is only with economic information i mean economic calendar like if you were to watch the news that you could have found something during this period that you wouldn't have caught in the economic calendar that's possible again this is for those of you who don't want to be watching the news all the time which i get um no significant new information and what did we see as a result of that prices kind of fluctuated around the same point yeah then what happened then Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell spoke. That's a central bank speech. What do we say about speeches? They often talk about the future. And even if we knew nothing about the direction, I just forecasted a change in volatility. I chose the upside because I thought it was slightly more likely that we were going to go to the upside. And by the way, I can make another video, as I mentioned, about picking the direction if you guys are interested. But for now, let's imagine I just guessed this. I just flipped a coin. Then what did I do? Then I added to my winner and I trailed my stop, okay? And then I eventually took profits on both of these positions. I believe it was last week. Um, and then now I'm in this position. Why? We're heading into the ECB interest rate decision now, um, which will be tomorrow at the time of recording this. And well, I'm uploading this today, so it, should be, it will be tomorrow. Um, and what do we see? Yesterday, two days before the announcement, I've anticipated higher volatility. What have we seen? Low volatility. And then what are we entering now? We're entering higher volatility. So what do I forecast? It's either going to go up, even if it doesn't hit my, my target, doesn't matter, my stops trailed. So I believe, I don't know, I think it's here-ish. So, you know, I'm already at basically 1R, regardless, I don't really care. But even if it expands lower, expands up, doesn't matter. The point is, is that volatility is already expanding. And so I just forecast that with this announcement, it's probably going to continue doing that. And I'm just building my risk management around that to take advantage of it best I can. That's it. That's literally it. Now, all of the other little nuances, little differences, the how I'm taking advantages, how I'm, how I'm doing the direction, how I'm managing the risk, how I'm scaling in, how I'm trailing my stop, how I'm picking targets, 
these sorts of things. These are, you know, these can be done. You can figure them out yourself um, and that's fine. Um, but uh, these are things that can come with experience um, or just having a strict set of rules. Now, with our Discord, we focus on mean reversion. So this is not following the the trend in this specific way, um, mainly because the win rate is going to be higher with not necessarily doing this. Um, and it also gives you us more setups. But the way that we, the reason we chose mean reversion is because if we just zoom out, the periods of time where prices are choppy and consolidatory last a lot longer than these high volatility periods. Therefore, we are we want to we will basically be getting an ideal environment for our trading system most of the time, which is better for our for the students' performance because it's it's easier to trade in these sorts of things as well. But we will be adding this as well soon. So if you'd like early access to that, then please do um, check out the links below. Um, I would highly recommend joining the Discord. Um, we've got a twenty four hour flash sale on right now, which will be a hundred and 50 pounds off the asking price if you want to message me on telegram to discuss it or see if it is still available then message me here um but we'll be discussing these things shortly as well but even if we don't do this this is the the, the point of this is to understand that it's not about necessarily always getting the direction right it's about exposing yourself more to one side than the other at strategic points where you know that prices are more likely to have that high volatility behavior. Now, if you want to take this to the next level as well, going down to a lower time frame, reading the structure around these key points, even though they don't happen that often, you know, you'll probably be getting like a handful a month. Um, then you can scale in, you can do some other things, you can experiment with those things as well. Um, looking at the structure, you know, I've had some ridiculous days doing these sorts of things before. Um, but, the, you know, but I'll be sometimes waiting a week or two in between like the major, major moves. But that's fine. Depends on the personality. And these are things that I can't always communicate in a video. Um, so if you'd like to join the community, you're more than welcome to do that. Or if you'd like to book a one on one, if you're interested in one on one, I will also leave the link for that as well uh, in the description box below. But listen, guys, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you in the next one. Take care.